Hey, it's Zach down in Fort Myers, Florida. And as you know by now, I'm a real estate broker. Now, obviously I really like Fort Myers, so yeah, I'm biased, but I'm also honest. And as someone who has lived in three different countries, four different states, and three different cities in Florida alone, I can honestly tell you that whether you're gonna be a seasonal snowbird or a year-round resident, there's a few things about Fort Myers that just really, well, they suck. So as I tell all of my clients, I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly about a home or community that you're looking at. And the same goes for a city or any area in Southwest Florida. And while everywhere has its positives and negatives, today we're going to talk about the bad and the ugly of living in Fort Myers, Florida. So let's jump right into number one, the weather. Yes, most people who visit the area between December and March think the weather is spectacular. And it is spectacular during those times. But when you live here year-round, between mid-June and late September, sometimes even into early November, the heat and the humidity are just brutal. I mean, you open your door at 6 a.m., which, you know, should be the coolest time of the day. You open your door to go outside, and the heat and humidity just punch you right in the face. There's, there's no other way to describe it. It just takes your breath away for a second. I've lived here for years, and obviously I go outside every day, and I'm still taking it back almost every summer morning when I first step outside. It's just brutal. Next is the traffic. If you're planning to be a snowbird, the summer heat won't be a concern, but the joy of being a seasonal destination is that your population, and therefore your traffic, increase a lot in the winter time. Now to make matters worse, snowbird season happens to coincide with the school year, so not only does traffic get a lot heavier during the winter, but you also have school buses that really slow down your drive. Now obviously you cannot pass a school bus when it's stopped and its lights are flashing, but a lot of buses are on residential streets that don't allow passing, so even when the bus is moving, you can't get around it. And of course, it's a school bus, so they stop a lot, and you can't pass them. And because of all the traffic, there's often a line of 10 or 20 cars behind each bus. So even if you could pass the bus, unless you're the first car, it's probably not a good idea. After talking about traffic, it's an easy segue into public transportation. Public transport in Fort Myers is handled by Lee County Transit, or Lee Tran, and it's really not that good. Lots of folks move here from places like Chicago, New York, or Boston that have subway systems, or even places like Minneapolis that have light rail systems, and they're a little surprised that we only have a bus system. And while that may be an okay option for some people, the buses sit in the same traffic that cars do, so there's really no personal benefit. Plus, your own vehicle gets you right to the door of your destination. Anyway, people that are used to good public transportation are almost always pretty disappointed when they find out we don't have anything that's even remotely close to where they came from. Now let's talk about my backyard. When we're friends, you're more than welcome to come over and hang out, go for a swim, and have a drink. But for now, you're just going to have to hear all about the wildlife that we see firsthand. I live in South Fort Myers, and in my community or my yard, I've personally seen small creatures like snakes, lizards, turtles, mosquitoes, and other bugs of course, and larger animals like alligators, I mean this is Florida, but also wild pigs, bobcats, otters, and bears. My home backs onto a state park, so I probably see more wildlife than the average person, but the point is, if you aren't able to tolerate all sorts of creatures, you might not like it here. And most Floridians, both transplants and locals, are very defensive of our wildlife. Every so often, you'll see a post on Facebook or next door, someone's going to call in to have an alligator removed from a lake, which is their territory and they aren't hurting anybody, and within 36 hours or so, there's going to be well over 100 comments reprimanding the person for having the animal removed. The general thought is that they were here long before us, they're going to be here long after us, we're encroaching on their territory, and they're not hurting anyone, so if you plan to move here but you can't tolerate wildlife, regardless of what it is, you might not like it. And you probably won't like your neighbors when they stand up for an alligator over a person. But depending on where you choose to live, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be part of a homeowners association or an HOA. If you want to live in a condominium or other multifamily housing, or you want to be in a gated community or have amenities such as a community pool, tennis courts, or a gym, you'll have to be part of an HOA. There's no way around it if you want any of these things. However, if you plan to live in a single family home and you don't care about community amenities, you can find somewhere either within or outside of an HOA. Now HOAs can be brutal. HOA rules vary from one to another, but for the most part, they're going to limit what you can do with your home aesthetically. For example, you can only paint your house certain colors, or your landscaping has to be approved by a committee. And there may be other rules, such as limits on where you can park your vehicles, or what kind of pets, or how many pets you can have. I live in an HOA, and I like it, but I certainly understand why some people don't like it. I personally don't have any plans to park any cars on my front lawn, or have anyone live in an RV in my driveway. And I also like that I don't need to worry about my neighbors doing that. But yeah, homeowners associations can be very restrictive, 
and I understand why some people don't like them. If you're one of the people that doesn't want to live in an HOA, I totally get it and I fully support your decision. We'll just need to look into specific areas to find the perfect home for you since HOAs are pretty common here. Now these are just some of the things that you'll learn as you progress on your home buying process and these are some of the things that I try to teach on this channel. So if you're trying to learn more about living in the Fort Myers area, please be sure to click that subscribe button so you never miss one of my videos. And of course you can reach out to me anytime or ask a question just down below in the comments. I'm here to answer any questions you have in making your move to Fort Myers, whether it's for a seasonal home or as a year-round resident, as easy as possible. So now that you know some of the negatives of living in Fort Myers, check out this video right over here about the most common myths that people hear about buying a home and living in Fort Myers. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.